What should I practice when I go to the airplane? I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Hello aviators, welcome back. So I get asked the question all the time by certificated pilots, what should I practice when I go to the airplane? Or, you know, what are the skills that, that decay for private pilots? Um, in fact, I got this question on our last patron hangout, pretty much that exact question. So Andrew threw in a question where he says like, what, what, what do most pilots get lazy with? or what is the most common slippage in skills. So one thing that I think is super important to practice is airspeed changes. I mean, airspeed control is so important for so many different phases of flight. And when you practice airspeed changes, uh, you're practicing sight pictures, you're practicing the Lindbergh reference rudder control, uh, you're practicing mastery of your airspeed. Um, and I know that not everybody can fly with me, which is why we put this lesson directly into the Ground School app. And I'll show you how it works in the airplane in just a moment. But first, uh, let's, just, let's just review some of the basic principles. Okay, let's talk about the beauty of airspeed changes. I mean, one thing is, first of all, airspeed control is critical in many phases of flight, particularly uh, in having good landings and staying safe in the traffic pattern. Now, if we go to the Ground School app, you'll remember that lift equals all of these things, but the most important two for you in flight are airspeed and angle of attack, and they vary inversely. The slower you go, the larger your angle of attack. The faster you go, the lower the angle of attack. You're essentially swapping airspeed and angle of attack to maintain the same altitude. Um, I like to think of the Indiana Jones example when he swaps the bag of sand for the idol and tries to keep the, the weight constant. That's the same idea, trying to keep altitude constant. You will slow down and increase your angle of attack speed up and decrease your angle of attack and try to do all of that with just enough finesse that you don't gain or lose altitude. Now, as you get better at this, you can do it more rapidly. You can start out slowly at first and then you know, when you get really good at it, you can just pull the power to idle and try to change the, the angle of attack rapidly before you lose altitude. Now, remember to divide your attention. The idea here is that you're connecting a sight picture outside with an airspeed value inside and that airspeed indicator is late to the party every time it lags. So the first thing you do is change the power, change the sight picture, and then confirm that the airspeed is working out the way you want it to. Um, I find a good way to practice this is to take a piece of paper and just skewer it over the flight instruments so that you can bend the corner and see the airspeed anytime you want, but you are prevented from fixating on that area. Uh, here's what it looks like in the airplane. Right now we're cruising along. We've got power set at 2100 RPM. Uh, it's just me on board today, and we're getting an airspeed here of about 105 knots. We're 2,500 feet, so let's just imagine we're going to slow down to uh, 90 knots first, all right? So I'm going to reduce power to a known setting. Let's try 1,800 RPM, and I'll go just a little bit higher than 1,800 because in a fixed pitch propeller, um, as the airplane slows down, the propeller and therefore the engine RPM will also slow down. And then I'm just slowly trading, just like Indiana Jones, you know, trading the bag of idle, <laughs> the bag of sand for the for the idle head here. I'm just trading as the airspeed slows down. I'm increasing the angle of attack slightly. I'm using trim so that I'm always comfortable and I'm not fighting the airplane. And there we go. Look, we got 90 knots, and so we've achieved that at just shy of 1,800. I'm actually going to bump it up. So we're 1800 proper with my parallax here. There we go. So we now know that in this aircraft, um, for you know, pretty close to 90 knots, it's going to be 1800 RPM with one person on board. If there's two people, you might try 1850. If the, you know, if it's not a high pressure day like this, you might try 1850. But at least you're in the ballpark, right? Okay. So let's slow down a little bit more here. Let's slow down to uh, 70 knots now. So I'm going to reduce power yet again. I'm going to reduce it to 1600 RPM. Also, just aiming a little high, dividing my attention so that after I set the power, I can start to introduce the trim, I can cross-check the altitude and keep my eyes outside the airplane as much as possible. 
Uh, if there's any secret to flying, if you had to say, hey, Jason, well, what's like the one secret to flying airplanes? Um, I'm going to say there isn't one, but if I had to pick and you had like a gun to my head and said pick, I would say the ability to divide your attention and manage multiple tasks such that everything works out and you get the result you want. Everything arrives at the right place at the right time. All right, so here we are. We got a little lower than 1600 and there's 70 knots, so we'll see how this kind of stabilizes here. Beautiful. So it's looking good. So now we know that 1600 RPM has given us 70 knots in this airplane. These known power settings are really important to you, by the way. You'll start to learn the airplane if you keep track of those, um, and that's critical. Now, we, I can still see over the nose. I'm assuming you guys can still see over the nose. Let's, let's slow down now to a speed where we may lose that, and we might have to introduce the Lindbergh reference. Let's go for 60 knots now. I'm going to slow down to 1500 RPM. We'll see what this gets us. It might not be low enough, but who knows. See, I'm pitching up a little too aggressively here. I'm starting to climb, dividing my attention, keeping my eyes outside the airplane. Now for me, as I sit comfortably in my seat here, the horizon is just maybe a finger above the dash. You can't see it, but I'm closing one eye like, like I'm you know, shooting a gun or something. Aiming small and missing small, that's very important. Look for the tiniest little things you can in the sight picture, a rivet against a tree out there or something, instead of just saying, oh, the dash against the horizon in the background. The smaller you aim, the more accurate you will be. You guys should also stay tuned into what the left wing looks like. You know, as you look out there, just kind of visualize the cord line of the wing, a line going from the trailing edge through the leading edge of the wing. Uh, visualize that and make sure that you can start to see angle of attack, or at least pitch attitude, you know, an approximation of angle of attack on the horizon, against the horizon, sorry, using your left wing, right? When you're flying like this, slow like this, and we'll say any speed slower than cruise speed, so any speed slower than about 80 knots, you want to think in terms of pitching for speed and powering for altitude. Um, it's, it's all the same. Pitch and power are inextricably entwined. You can't pull them apart even if you want to. Uh, but there are certain phases of flight, <coughs> especially in light airplanes, where it's convenient and uh, arguably safer to think about it one way or the other. Um, in this case, your most immediate reaction for pitch, if I pitch down like that, see the airspeed builds up right away. If I pitch up like this, the airspeed bleeds off right away. But power has kind of a, a delayed response. So in this condition, when we're in slow flight or minimum controllable airspeed, we are definitely going to pitch to speed, power to altitude. All right, let's back off the power just a little bit more because we're not quite at 60 and the pitch isn't quite as high as I want it to be yet. All right, there we go. Now I'm starting to lose the horizon. For me, the horizon's kind of hitting right about here. I don't know if that's where it is for you guys, um, but that's where you want to follow it, right down here through the Lindbergh reference. Another thing this is really good for is rudder control, right? Because as you slow down, you lose your reference over the horizon. You will have to use the Lindbergh reference to make sure that the left turning tendencies are not getting the best of you and that the nose of the aircraft is not yawing left. So that will force you to find the proper visual references and use the correct amount of rudder pressure. You may notice as we're flying slower, we need more rudder control, right? As we slow down our left, the, the countermeasures against the left turning tendencies, that is the little twist in the tail and the offset of the thrust, all of those things become less effective. So, and to make it worse, the left turning tendencies become more prominent Right now we've got P factors increased. Um, so in any case, what you want to do, that's part of the reason you keep your eyes outside the airplane is to be able to see this stuff. And if you're having trouble seeing it, you can always just you know mark something over here in the Lindbergh reference like that and just let go. You guys see that out there? Just let go of the rudder so you can see, oh, I see what Jason's talking about. When I let go of the rudder, the airplane just yaws back to the left. Okay, so start to get in the habit of holding the airplane with your right foot. And if you're in trim, you can kind of just fly around like this with your right foot. All right, you guys, bring power back in. We'll go back to 1800 RPM. Right, in fact, let's just go right back to cruise. Now notice as I put in this much power, I'm holding the little right rudder because all that slipstream is winding around the airplane and banging on the tail and pushing my nose to the left. And we're accelerating pretty rapidly. I'm going right back to 2100 RPM, which is where we started. So I have to kind of pitch forward a little faster than I did before and make sure that I get the right power pitched for level and I should be back close to my 105 knots where we started. Those, my friends, are airspeed changes and that's what I move into pretty much right after we do 
maybe three lessons with the four fundamentals, I'll go right into those airspeed changes. Now, if you're not familiar with the Lindbergh reference, you have to check out this lesson in the Ground School app, which goes through how important this particular visual reference is for so many phases of flight. All right, aviators, that's all for this episode of The Finer Points. I wanna thank you for watching this video. Please leave me a comment below for videos you'd like to see in the future. Um, also hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that little alert bell, share far and wide with your friends. Um, a huge thanks to the sponsors and to the patrons. Without that support, these videos uh, and podcasts that come out week over week just would not be possible. Uh, remember that when you renew your AOPA membership, you should select Pilot Protection Services. But most importantly, until next time, be safe fly your best.